This is the Palin Update on Sarah Net Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. I am going to try to help America, all of us as individuals, make our federal government as irrelevant in our lives as possible. Sarah Palin mapping out her New Year's resolutions. And while Christmas may be over, Palin points out tis still the season. And she drove that home with an amazing video and song done by, get this, a rapping priest-to-be. The rapper known as Communion is here to talk about his remake of a Christmas classic and the attention he got from Governor Palin. Sarah Palin unveils her New Year's resolutions. We'll take a look. The governor blasts MSNBC for their racist coverage of Mitt Romney's little grandchild. A brand new Commonwealth Common Sense with Susan Stimson is on the way. And just ahead, our latest edition of Steel Resolve with Sarah Steelman. Now, if you haven't heard this song by now, you have to check it out. It is a remake of White Christmas, but it concentrates on Christ. I'm dreaming of the right Christmas to celebrate when Christ was born. With the church bells ringing and people are singing with cheer. Glory to the Lord, the Lord. Sarah Palin took notice of the song and featured it online. I remember back when I was just a snotty-nosed kid. The Christmas holiday was just bigger than big. All the family would get together. The chilly weather in December, vivid childhood memories. I still remember me, David, Carlos, and Xavier would be on our best behavior. To try to get more presents and wreck points have been our favor. But 20 years later, I've come to realize the Christmas scene about the stuff inside the wrapping paper. It's and the rapper you hear in the song has a very Christ, unique background. His name is Alvaro Vega, but he goes by his rap name Communion, and we welcome him here today to the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. How are you, sir? Pretty good at yourself, Kevin. Doing well. Thanks so much for being here. And you did the rapping part of The Right Christmas, which is a remake of White Christmas, basically bringing Jesus Christ heavily into the song, and you guys had a lot of fun along the way, too. You teamed up here with Chris Adams and Mark LaBelle. Uh, tell us, how did this all come together? All right, well, um, White Christmas is actually one of my favorite uh, Christmas tunes of all time. Like, I'll be humming this, you know, all year long, even in, like, June. And uh, so, I, you know, I've been doing music for a while now, and, um, you know, with the intent of, evangelizing through music, reaching out to souls, um, you know, with the with the message of the good news. And so Christmas time came around and and I wanted to do a song, um, you know, to try to bring, bring back the true meaning of Christmas because, you know, with the commercialization and with uh, secularization, um, a lot of times it feels like it, it gets lost on people. They're so focused on, on the present, on you know, getting whatever they want for Christmas, and then they forget about the true meaning. So that's kind of, that was the the, uh, the main inspiration behind the song. And so, um, you know, Dece- December came around, and, you know, this idea just popped in my head, and I got together with, you know, Mark and, and Chris, and it just came together. And now to expand a little bit on your background, tell our listeners what you're working on when you're not rapping. Well, I'm actually a seminarian of, of the Archdiocese of Miami, so that means I'm studying to be a priest. Um, I'm three and a half years into it, and three and a half years away, God willing. So that's that's my main calling in life, you know, to serve the Lord, to serve His people, um, you know, through the church and Music is just something I do for fun, but also something I'm using as a tool, you know, to evangelize and to to reach out to people that otherwise might not hear, um, you know, the the message of the gospel. And now along with the song, you made a video, and it's just great. You use Charlie Brown and some other Peanuts characters, and then you have cartoons of you and Chris and Mark. It, it just turned out wonderfully. Was it what you expected? Yeah, well, actually, um, 
No, it actually turned out better than I expected. Um, my brother, Carlos, he was the one who did the production of the video. He did the animation for the cartoons. And he basically came with the whole idea of, you know, making us into little Peanuts uh, cartoon characters and, you know, having all those different environments. And so he worked away on it for a few days and, you know, it just it came together and it was better than I expected, you know, but it's gotten a great response from, from people. And the video and song caught the eye of Sarah Palin, who's been fighting to preserve Christmas with her new book, and she tweeted it out and posted it on Facebook, your video, wow. so, you know, now a lot more people will see and hear your work because of the governor. That's awesome, that's awesome. I was wondering how, like, how it jumped so quickly in one day, <laughs> <laughs> you know, from, like, from like 1,000 views to, like, 11,000 in one day. I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. God bless her. God bless her, Palin. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, someone sent it to her, and then she put it out there, and that's that's how all of us got a hold of it. But I, I think it was great because everybody's enjoyed it so far. So uh, would you like to send a message to Sarah Palin? What would you tell her for uh, recognizing this song? Uh, I just want to thank you, uh, Mrs. Palin, for, you know, for, for, for tweeting out the song. I really appreciate your support, and you know, I think we're on the same side here, you know, trying to trying to do good in this world and and reach out to people, you know, with the truth of, of Jesus Christ, with um, bringing back the true meaning of Christmas, bringing back, um, you know, moral values and into our society. And I just want to applaud you for, for everything that you do. And, and thanks for, you know, telling other people about my song. I appreciate that. Now, you mentioned the goal a little bit here. You want to be able to spread the word and use your music to do so. And, and rapping, I think you'll be able to get into a lot of communities in different areas as well that may help. And, you know, I like the fact that, you know, you said you like to listen to White Christmas in June or whenever. You know, just because we're into the new year now, we still need to stand up for Christmas all year, right? Whether it's with your song or with Governor Palin's book or just, you know, regular Americans just talking about it. This is important to talk about throughout the year, not just December and January. Right, totally agree with you, and I have plans on on making more music and and releasing more songs. You know, talking, um, bringing bringing back Christ and, and and God into, you know, the conversation. And um, you know, I got a lot of ideas for for future songs. Um, you know, I hope that that God can really utilize me in that way, and you know, I, I look forward to. Um, you know, to continue to, to make more music, you know, with the gospel message. And as p people who haven't seen The Right Christmas or any of your other stuff, how can they get a hold of uh, Communion and, and listen to uh, your work and, and see the video? Well, the best way would be to, to go to YouTube, and um, you can do a search for um, The Right Christmas, and it should come up, or Communion, which is my rap name in The Right Christmas. I also have another music video called I Believe, which is a song proclaiming faith in Jesus Christ. And it's a rap music video, but it, the whole thing was shot on green screen, so it has a lot of special effects in it. And I, I consider that to be really my magnum opus, you know, my greatest work to date. And it's a song where I really go at it, um, no holds barred, just, you know, proclaiming faith in Christ and and exposing people to the truth, you know, of, of Jesus Christ and, and of the church. And so I really want to, you know, encourage everybody to check that out as well. It's called I Believe, and my rap name is Communion. Um, or you could also search Alvaro Vega, that's, that's my real name. Um, and so those are on YouTube, and I'm also on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash communionhiphop or youtube.com slash communion hip hop. Well, this is really great, and, you know, you really made a lot of people smile here as we headed toward the end of the Christmas and New Year season. And, um, you know, listen, when you're ordained, it's going to be great. We'll have you back on. We'll say, here he is, the rapping priest. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, having me on the show, Kevin. Yes, he is Alvaro Vega. He's known as Communion, his rap name. you got to check this out, folks. It's called The Right Christmas. Go ahead and take a look at it. It's available right on our...
page to sarahnet.net or on Sarah Palin's uh, Twitter at Sarah Palin USA or Sarah Palin's Facebook page as well. Alvaro, thank you so much. God bless you. Keep up your great work. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you too. And uh, it was, it was a, truly an honor and a pleasure to be on your show. And uh, God bless all the listeners as well. I'm Sarah Palin. Communion, by the way, is in the Archdiocese of Miami. Mark LaBelle is also a seminarian out of Orlando. And Chris Adams works in the maintenance department where Communion studies. Great stuff. For more, go to Facebook.com slash Communion Hip Hop or YouTube.com slash Communion Hip Hop. After Christmas came the new year and Sarah Palin rang it in in style, appearing on Fox along with the Duck Dynasty gang. The governor also released her goals for 2014, and it is a lofty list. Among the resolutions, help others make the federal government as irrelevant in our lives as possible. Live out Coach John Wooden's Pyramid of Success, encouraging everyone to do our individual part, to live with industriousness, self-discipline, and selflessness, so we collectively as a nation can restore America to her exceptionalism. Be even more aggressive in calling out media for practicing lapdog laziness and eat more meat. After a panel on MSNBC mocked Mitt Romney and his family for a picture that featured all of his grandchildren, including his baby grandchild who's black, Sarah Palin spoke out, writing, quote, Holy unbelievable. The hypocritical leftist lamestream media should be shamed by every caring, child-loving American. It has once again reached a new low, unquote. Yes, it has. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page and follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA. It's time for Commonwealth Common Sense with Susan Stimson and Kevin Shola. Hello, Susan. Welcome back. Hi, Kevin. My pleasure to be here. So what's going on? Well, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on what we've been discussing about the move that American Crossroads in the U.S. Chamber is making, the loud noises in the newspapers and in the online debate about how they are going to weigh in with $50 million to ensure that there are no quote-unquote loser candidates. I think if you dig a little deeper into this issue, that there are other issues that really are important to these groups. Part of it, I think, is the illegal immigration issue, I think there's a move by big business that they would like to just see blanket amnesty because at the end of the day, for the big corporations, that means a lower cost to them for the workforce. And I do agree that there are genuine reforms that I think that we can do regarding the immigration issue. But if you watch what happens in these election cycles and what seems to happen to many people who get elected into office, especially in this D.C. climate, Money controls much of it, and if you do not play by their rules, then you get cut off. But if you do play by the rules, then your campaign donations continue to flow, and you end up making decisions that, at the end of the day, seem to benefit big business over the average American. Right, and then everything just goes around and around in a circle again, the whole you know get al- going along to get along deal that, that Palin always speaks out against. That's what you get here because they, you know, play by our rules and we'll take care of you kind of thing instead of the service that you're supposed to be offering. The interesting thing that is happening with this debate, though, is that the average person who isn't necessarily a political hack seems to be getting it. I was out to dinner with friends last week, and one of the people said, I would rather the 25 people that work in this restaurant be the ones who are making the decisions for us in Congress in Washington, D.C., because I would trust them more than I do the people who are there. And I think that that is what the Founding Fathers did intend. They intended for people to move through the, through the system and to not stay entrenched in office for decades. And they did have certain checks and balances in place the Senate functioning differently than Congress functions. But there is a missing part of what's happening in D.C., but you're seeing it grow and influence. The average person coming in to to Washington, D.C., is now, I think you're seeing in some of these candidates, they're a little more in tune with what's happening with the average American, and they're bucking the system. And big business doesn't like that. 
Well, you're right, and the founders wanted people to come from all walks of life and also to go serve and then go back to their old job instead of, you know, rotting and being part of Washington uh, for decades upon decades. I think we saw that the last time around. A lot of the folks that Governor Palin endorsed, you know, Deb Fisher, a rancher, uh, Paul Gosar, a dentist, Ted Yoho, a veterinarian, you know, different types of people with different takes on things and, you know, offering what they can offer and then getting out of there. So what do, what do we look for here? Is term limits a solution? I do think that term limits is one way to move toward just ensuring that there is a, a better flow of, of people coming in and out of political office. It was never meant or intended by the Founding Fathers to be a career, but we certainly are seeing very many of them stay in there for quite a long time and making a career of it. And I do think that term limits is one way that uh, we could address this issue. I also think, especially here in Virginia, that that should be wrapped in ethics reform. And unfortunately, the number of bills that I've looked at that have been submitted by legislators for potential discussion this session, very, very few of them deal with ethics reform. And they're there is a need to address the very lax uh, form, reform ideas that uh, just don't exist right now. You know, I tend to agree with you. Um, just to play devil's advocate, though, I've heard people say, and, and these have been conservatives, some conservatives I've heard say this as far as term limits, that, well, they're not really for them because if, if you're in a liberal district or a conservative district, you're just going to get the same type of policies anyway, even though the person may be different. But I think that perhaps the next person may learn from what the other person did or didn't do. What do you think? I think part of what happens is that you can become desensitized, and if you stay in the office for too long, uh, you just become desensitized to issues that that you did understand uh, before you were a legislator. And I used to not be a fan of term limits, but seeing the influence that that business does have and that lobbyists do have and really just uh, a circular uh, function of lobbyists lobbying, you know, elected officials and then the campaign accounts grow and decisions are made based on what those lobbyists want versus what's best for the people just because they're trying to win the next election. I think if there's a freedom for people who are in this office not having to worry about the next election, I think you would see a different uh, decision-making process and a different result. All right, Susan, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Susan Stimson in Virginia. More Commonwealth Common Sense next week. Now, our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. Thank goodness for the 11 state attorneys general who are calling President Obama out on his illegal actions. In a series of pronouncements, by this administration, Obama has simply amended the law to his liking instead of making the changes by going through Congress. It is outrageous and it is terribly, terribly dangerous that he continues to get away with this kind of abuse of power. Doesn't he have more respect for the three branches of government? No. Doesn't he have respect for the Constitution? No. The 11 Republican attorneys general specifically called President Obama out on his executive action that allowed insurance companies to keep offering health plans that have been canceled for not meeting the standards in Obamacare. We live in a republic with three branches of government that ensures a balance of power. President Obama continues to thumb his nose at Congress and the Constitution every time he changes a rule, creates an exemption, or uses his executive power far beyond the use that was intended. Is there no Democratic attorney general in this country that will join with these 11 Republican attorney generals in respect of the law? Whether one agrees or disagrees with Obamacare isn't the issue. This issue simply is wrong, and it tears our country apart every time Obama abuses his power to pick and choose the provisions of a law that he wants to enforce. President Obama how about some R-E-S-P-E-C-T for the Constitution as a New Year's resolution for 2014? This is Sarah Steelman for Serenet Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. The Palin Update, including Commonwealth Common Sense and Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download. So just head to serenetradio.net, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. 
Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, follow along on Twitter at Saranet Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Susan B. Stimson, and at Sarah underscore Steelman. For a full recap of everything you hear on the Palin Update, plus more news regarding Governor Palin, head to our Facebook page and like Sarah Net Radio. Also, like Kevin Shola on Facebook. Palin Patriots is our feature on saranet.net. There you can check out the writings from our great panel of contributors, including Martha Zoller, Bader Carmud, and Dan Bongino. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Just go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Sarah Steelman, Susan Stimson, and everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Communion. And thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.